Hey guys, welcome back to the Cutting Edge Garage, and today we are going to take a look at the Texa Marine software. Uh, Texa has some of the most robust and comprehensive coverage of any marine diagnostic tool. Um, you can work on anything from little PwC motors all the way up to giant diesel engines. So if it goes on the water and it's got an engine in it, the Texa will talk to it. So let's dive in and take a look. All right, today I'm taking a look at the Texas software on Texas proprietary Axoni Nemo tablet. Um, this is a really tough tablet. Um, it's waterproof. Um, it's got Gorilla Glass, really drop resistant. Um, you can drop these on the concrete without worrying about it too much. It's not going to damage it or anything like that. So it's excellent for the marine environment. If you splash some water on it, it's going to be just fine. It won't affect it at all. All right, so let's go ahead and hop into the marine software here. All right, this first screen, uh, first we got to pick, you know, what kind of engine we're working on. This will work on uh, inboards, uh, even some industrial engines and generators, outboard engines, and, uh, of course, PwC, um, jet skis, stuff like that. So today, let's take a look at, let's go inboard engines. I'm going to hop on, let's do a Volvo Penta. I think we're going to check out the 5 liter, yeah, one of the more common ones. All right. So let's go over some of the stuff we see in the screen. Along the left side, the first thing we see below self-diagnosis, which is where we are now, is wiring diagrams. Um, Texa has built-in wiring diagrams, so you don't have to leave the scan tool and stop working to go to another computer to uh, you know, look at your wiring diagrams. All right, and if you double tap on any of these wires, I can see my current flow, and this works on either uh, this works on ground and the uh, battery positive as well. So you can see your ground distribution and your power, power distribution and which way the current is supposed to be flowing. And that makes it easy, easier to visualize how the power is supposed to be flowing through all these circuits. All right, next on the list, we have technical data sheets. This is going to be technical data for the engine. And as, as you can see, we've got a ton for this Volvo Penta. So let's just kind of pick one at random here. Let's do fuel tank settings and calibration. All right, and this gives you a complete step-by-step -step procedure on the fuel tank level sensor calibration and everything you need to do to get it calibrated. Because a lot of these calibrations you do on boats um, don't require a scan tool technically, but you need to know all the buttons to push and the procedures to do to get it into its learn mode. And this, uh, the Texa will give you all of the service information you need to know what buttons to push to get it into learn mode and get everything recalibrated, which is really handy. All right, next on the list, we have our nominal values and guided diagnosis. Um, now, these were put in here by uh, Mr. Mario Giocamella. He's the product manager for Texan Marine, and he used to be a technician, so he knows how important it is and how much easier it makes it when you can have all this information at your fingertips. So let's just kind of take a look at one of these. Um, let's do trim sensor potentiometer. Now, this will be a guided diagnosis, things you need to test, voltages you need to look for to diagnose this problem if you have this particular uh, trouble code. So as you can see, it, it gives us all the nominal values we need, the wire colors we got to test. So you can see right here, key on position, component disconnected. We're on the brown and white wire, that's positive. We're looking for five volts. And then on the ground, you would usually go to the battery negative. It's usually where you want to go. And then you would check it at the connector too and check for a voltage drop. But really, really easy to follow, nice guided diagnosis, which is really helpful in the marine sector. I know diagnostic and troubleshooting information can be a lot harder to find if you're an independent tech and you work on a lot of different marine engines. So really helpful stuff in there. All right, our next thing is technical data and maintenance. This is some additional technical data. And what we have in here is we got our timing chain, timing chain check. So easy step-by-step. -step tells you how to set it up to check and we're checking for a maximum chain deflection looks looks like it's 11 millimeters on this so really easy to check as soon as you pull that timing cover off you can check your deflection there's more than 11 millimeters they need a time and chain set all right so that about covers everything on the left hand side of the screen i wanted to talk about so let's go ahead and jump into a demo diagnosis uh, it is worth noting these demos were actual recordings off live engines this wasn't just some somebody at a computer kind of making up a simulation this was actually taken off uh, a live boat with this engine so let's go to demo diagnosis. All right, we'll let it load in. It can take up to two minutes for this for to get into this engine. It usually doesn't take anywhere near that long though. All right, now that we're in the instrument panel here, we can see we got uh, looks like we got four active faults. 
Now, it's always going to default you straight to the fault page because that's usually what techs want to see first is what our trouble codes are. So as you can see, we got the, uh, that color triangle on the left-hand side. When it's red, that means that is an active fault. Um, they can be yellow as well, and that's, that means it's a memory fault or an inactive fault. And when you with the Texas scan tool, something I kind of like actually is when you clear these codes, they don't just disappear, they turn green. They're still cleared out of the control module. It is still displays it on the scan tool for you in case you need to go back and reference it again. So if you see uh, codes listed here that are green, that means they're cleared out and they're no longer in the module. Now on the bottom left, we can go ahead and print a report from here. Um, we have a shortcut to our technical data sheets. Um, these are the same sheets that we were looking at before. Um, you'll see that shortcut kind of sprinkled through throughout the software in case you need to reference it quickly. You don't have to back out of your diagnosis and go find it. It's always right there at your fingertips. Um, we can save this if we don't want to print a report. And our last button here on the bottom, that is our uh, clear codes button. And that will just clear all the codes out of this control module. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to parameters. All right, this is going to be all of our live data. And it looks like we don't have too much to worry about here on this, uh, on this instrument panel. So we only have 13 data PIDs on this instrument panel. But some of, these, uh, some of these boats will have a ton of data PIDs. We'll have hundreds of data PIDs in some of these modules. So what you can do if you want to filter and find something quickly, I can hit the filter button down here on the bottom. And then you can search by keyword. And we'll just search by key. If I want to see my key supply hit the check mark and now that's all I'm gonna see is the, the data PIDs I want so it's really helpful like if uh, if you want to see like your exhaust temperatures in the engine control module you can just search temperature click all your exhaust temps you want to see and then filter by that um, you don't then you don't have to scroll through you know 200 data PIDs to find what you're looking for it can really save you a lot of time alright to get rid of my filter I just hit the filter button again then we should see everything uh, the button next to that is actually a favorites list, and it functions very similar to the filter, except you can save the list that you want to see. So say I, I really like looking at these four data PIDs when I'm working on these Volvo Penta engines. So I select those four, hit the check mark. you got to name it. I'll just name it key. Hit the check mark. And now this will always be saved no matter, it's not just on this particular engine, but if I work on any of these Volvo Pena 5 liter GXIs, this, uh, this data PID custom list will always be available to me. And you can have multiple lists here. As you keep adding them, you'll just get more tabs. So it's really nice if you work on a lot of, uh, like you work on a lot of Volvo, then you can have a bunch of your key data PID lists all ready to go and you don't have to do this every time. And of course, from this screen, we can edit any of the lists we have, we can delete them, and we can print them as well. So let's go back to our main live data screen. Um, only other buttons we have here is uh, we have our min max reset button. As you can see under the data value, we have a, a green number and a red number. That's our minimum and maximum value. And sometimes you want to reset those to see what they're doing. So you set our min max reset. That'll reset the min and max value so you can see what your new min max values are going to be. Uh, we got a, the same shortcut here to our technical data sheets. That's the same stuff in the previous screen. Like I said, it's kind of everywhere in the software, so you always got, uh, got access to it. And then, of course, we can print a report of all our data PIDs as well. All right, so moving on, we'll go to status. This is going to show our switches and relays and what their current status is. So like you see, is our neutral switches released, and we got all of our other data PIDs in here to tell you what all of our switches and warning lights are. Um, immobilizer, it's really handy to know what the immobilizer is doing. Sometimes if you have like a no crank condition or even a, uh, a no start condition, just to rule out the immobilizer. So pretty straightforward here. We, we can print these out if we want to and also we got the same shortcut to our technical data sheets. So let's hop on over to ECU info. Now here it's going to show all of our hardware versions, serial numbers, uh, calibration IDs if you need them will be in here as well. Uh, engine serial number and chassis number. Um, usually if you can see, like if you're in the engine control module and you want to see engine operating hours, it will usually be listed either in ECU info or parameters. All right, now we have under activations here is error clearing. Now if you go under like the engine control module, you have a ton more stuff you can turn off and on, but in the, in the instrument panel, there's just not, not a whole lot that we can turn off and on. It's mostly about seeing your statuses, what all your switches and lights are doing, um, seeing what the immobilizer is doing is really helpful too. All right, so I hopped on over to a Yamaha 300 outboard. I want to show you guys some of the activations you'll have available if you're in an engine instead of an instrument panel. 
so we can see battery voltage history. That'd be really helpful if you want to see if a like a battery has gone dead or they've let the battery get to low, which can cause problems. Um, you can turn on injectors, do injector tests. You can see engine RPM history. Of course, you can clear codes from this screen, which you can pretty much always do. Um, turn on and off engine uh, ignition coils, operate your ISC valves, and you can see water temp history. That's really helpful if you want to see if uh, the customers overheated their engine because a lot of times they won't be truthful about that. All right, that about covers all the activations I wanted to talk about. Now, if you see another tab in here that's called settings, that's going to be stuff you can go in there and per permanently change, uh, like changing RPM, RPM limits, stuff like that, um, or engine shutdown warning lights. You can Some engines you can turn alarms on and off. Um, but that's the main difference between settings and activations. Settings is a permanent change. Activations are just tests and stuff you can actuate on and off on a temporary basis. Uh, but I think that's going to about wrap it up for our demo of the Texa Marine software. If you guys want any more information on this stuff, please feel free to give us a call here at 855-839-2626 or head on over to our website at ceasusa.com. We are more than happy to answer any questions you guys have on the Marine software, and you can learn how it can help you um, grow your business and be able to work on a much wider variety of vehicles. All right, so if you guys like this content, please uh, hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. Um, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.